Marie Tharp was born in 1920. She was often seen spending time watching her father in her youth. She occasionally saw her father make maps for his job, giving her an early introduction into map making. She graduated from the University of Ohio in 1943, initially receiving degrees in English and music. But when World War II began to rise, lots of younger men began to be recruited. This opened up many new spaces for women to take a variety of tracks in different colleges, one of them being a geology track originally saved for men. She had taken a smaller geology track at her past college, which helped her to be accepted into the petroleum geology course at the University of Michigan. There she received a master's degree, and then went on to receive a second master's degree in math at the University of Tulsa. She then took a job in the area, but was unpleased with it, as she was always restricted to a very small room, collecting maps for other men who were out in the field doing research. So, in search of more, she decided to move to New York. She would become one of the first women to join the Lamont Geological Observatory, later to be known as the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, as a scientist. She began doing drafting work, and later will find her partner, Bruce Hazen, who will help her plot out the ocean floor. As she was working on her second bachelor's degree, she moved to Columbia University, where a small group of scientists was about to revolutionize thoughts in science, specifically in oceanography. She was hired by Maurice Ewing as an assistant to some of the students who were collecting data, while never revealing she had a degree in geology herself. This is where she first met up with Bruce Hazen. They became close partners and worked hard together to map out the ocean floor, one piece at a time. At the time, women were not allowed to go onto ships, as it was considered dangerous. So Hazen had to go all around the Atlantic Ocean, collecting data using sonar sound recordings. He would send these recordings back to Marie Tharp, who would transform them into maps of the ocean floor. She would start by creating the data into two-dimensional maps, and then overlaying it using information regarding the latitude and longitude of the area to create a three-dimensional map. After calculating the data for her maps, she saw that there was a rift that was forming between the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The rift seemed to be forming due to molten material which was seeping out from the mantle and cooling at the surface, which was moving it apart. This proved that the tectonic plates were moving and the theory of continental drift was true. When the news of this came to Hazen, he believed continental drift could not be real, like most of the scientists at the time. Hazen and the other scientists dismissed the idea and considered the preposterous words as girl talk. Marie Tharp did not let these ideas get to her and remained determined to convince the world. She convinced Hazen to go into further research, just to prove that she was correct. Nothing that he found proved her maps to be wrong. So, when her maps proved to be correct, she became well known as the first scientist and woman to, to discover continental drift. Before the 1950s, scientists knew very little about the structure of the ocean floor and how it worked as it was much easier to study geology of the land. But without any knowledge of the ocean floor, scientists were unable to get a complete picture of how the entire Earth worked. Before we knew anything about the sea floor, most people thought that the Earth was shrinking due to cooling in the mantle. This was the common idea at the time. Marie Tharp convinced Bruce Hazen to research continental drift further after she had made her maps. After intense research, Hazen discovered that continental drift was indeed real. Once scientists like Hazen and Tharp began to collect data, they changed the stringy idea to show how tectonic plates were shifting on the ocean floor, which caused most of the unknown earthquakes and tsunamis. Hazen would go on to show Tharp's maps at many of his community talks. He was able to convince most of the skeptics of the theory that it was indeed real. Scientists now know how the rift valleys pull apart to the seafloor as new rock spreads from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge.
Marie Tharp was rejected for a long time, as she was the only one who believed continental drift was real. But no one was successful in confirming that her discovery of continental drift was inaccurate. This helped her to become the first female scientist to make this outstanding discovery. She broke the boundaries in the science world as well as for women. After Hayes died in 1977, Marie Tharp made it her goal to complete the map and get it published for all to see. Her map would go on to be published later that year by the Office of Naval Research and is still used by many today. Marie Tharp is forever known for her revolutionary discovery. Her maps have helped scientists to build a better understanding of the ocean floor and of the entire Earth. Tharp and Hayson were awarded Hubbard Medals, the highest honor of the National Geographic Society. In 1997, she was named one of the four greatest cartographers for the Library of Congress. Tharp was also honored on the 100th anniversary of the Library of Congress and Maps Divisions. She received many other awards as well, including the Lamont Doherty Heritage Award and the Mary Sears Woman Pioneer in Oceanography Award. She will always be remembered for her outstanding discovery and dedication to science.